Good morning all of you. Children, you all are welcome in the new session that is 2020-21 and congratulations for coming to Standard 12. Children, today I'm here to introduce you with the books of Standard 12. We have got two books of chemistry in Standard 12. The first book is Chemistry Part 1. We are talking about the NCRT books and we are going to study through the NCRT books only. The first book is Chemistry Part 1 and the second book is Chemistry Part 2. The pictures are being displayed, you all can see. Now the total chapters to be covered in this academic year for chemistry are 16 chapters. The first four chapters they come under physical chemistry. The first four chapters are solutions, electrochemistry, chemical kinetics and surface chemistry. These four chapters are of a weightage of 23 marks in the uh, board examination out of the 70 marks question paper. And the next four chapters that is general principles, general principles and process of isolation of elements, the P block elements, the D block elements and the coordination compounds. These four chapters are of a weightage of 90 marks, 19 marks in the board examination question paper out of 70 marks. The next, the next chapters from hello alkanes and hello arenes onwards, that is hello alkanes and hello arenes, alcohols, phenols and ethers, aldehyde, ketones and carboxylic acids, organic compounds containing nitrogen, that means the amine group, the NH3 containing compounds, the biomolecules, polymers and chemistry in everyday life. These chapters are there in the second part of the NCRT books, book and they cover, uh, they come under the organic chemistry. So we have to cover the 16 chapters in this academic year. Good morning all of you. Now we are going to start with the first chapter of physical chemistry that is solutions. Now the topics to be covered in the chapter are types of solutions, the concentration of solution, concentration expressed in terms of molarity molality, mole fraction, percentage by mass, percentage by volume and parts per million. Next is Rolle's law we have to study, Henry's law also we have to study and then on the basis of Rolle's law, ideal solution, non-ideal solution and the two types of non-ideal solution that is positive deviation and the negative deviation. The next thing that we have to cover is the colligative properties, the most important one. The colligative properties are four, relative lowering in vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and the osmotic pressure. And we have to study about the molar mass and the detection of molar mass from these four colligative properties. Now, we'll proceed with the first part of the chapter that is a solution. Now you all are familiar with solutions. You all know that solutions are the homogeneous mixtures of two or more than two components. This year we are concerned with binary solutions only. That means only two component solution. Now solutions are homogeneous. That means we are concerned not with the heterogeneous but only the homogeneous mixtures that are the solutions. Now uh, do you all know what is solution made up of? A solution is made up of a solute and a solvent about the binary solutions we are talking. Now a solute and a solvent. Generally children assume that 
in a solution the substance which is present in the more quantity is called the solvent and the other one which is present in the lesser quantity is termed as solute which is not true actually the solvent is that substance in which the dissolution takes place and solute is that substance in which sorry solute is that substance which gets dissolved so solute is that substance which dissolves and solvent is that substance in which the dissolution takes place and when the two are combined together they form a solution now a solution i can give you an example of a solution suppose we are having a glass beaker which is filled with water and i add a teaspoon of sugar in it now which one of the two will be called the solvent and which one will be the sol solute see here the liquid form is the solvent and the solid form is the solute but as it is not true for all the forms many a times a solute may be solid liquid or gas and the solvent may also be solid liquid on gas or gas now depending upon the physical state of solute and solvent we have nine types of solutions the first solutions the first types of solutions are gaseous solutions in which the solvent is always a gas but the solute may be solid or liquid or gas now children see this very carefully many a times a one mark question comes in the board exam from this topic from the examples of this topic now the gaseous solutions we are talking about the first type is which in which the solute as well as solvent both are gases an example is the mixture of oxygen and nitrogen gas oxygen is also a gas and nitrogen is also a gas the two when mixed together they form a solution the second type of solution is that in which the solute is a liquid but the solvent is a gas example is chloroform mixed with nitrogen gas the third type of solution is that in which a sol solid is dissolved in a gas example is a camphor in nitrogen gas camphor you all know is a sublimable substance the vapors of camphor are dissolved in nitrogen gas the second the second type of solutions are the liquid solutions they are also further of three types a liquid solution in which a gas is dissolved in liquid example is oxygen dissolved in water second is liquid dissolved in liquid any two liquids like ethanol dissolved in liquid water third is solid dissolved in liquid that is glucose dissolved in water and the fourth one is gas dissolved in solid example uh, of solid solution that is gas dissolved in solid example is solution of hydrogen in palladium next is liquid dissolved in solid all the adsorption phenomena and the third type is solid in solid solid in solid examples are all the alloys good morning all of you children i am again back with the video of chapter first that is solutions in the previous video you all have learnt about the first topic from of the chapter that is <coughs> that is the types of solutions in this video we will be learning about the concentrations of solution you all are already familiar with the word concentration concentration means the quantity of solute that is present in a given solvent now there are different methods of expressing that concentration the first method is percentage by mass suppose we are having a two component system 
of solute A and solvent B. Now, when we mix the two, we form the solution A, B. Like A plus B gives A, B. Now, in this solution, we can express the concentration of solute separately and that of solvent separately. Now, for expressing the concentration of solute in the solution, we will say the mass percent of component A in the solution is equal to the mass of com that component in the solution upon total mass and which is multiplied by 100 to calculate the percentage. Similarly, the mass percent of component B will be equal to the mass of component B divided by the total mass into 100. This is mass percent, the first method of expressing the concentration. Similarly, the second method of expressing the concentration is volume percent. It is similar to mass percent. Volume percent will be calculated either in ml or in liters. Now, volume percent of component A in the solution will be equal to volume of component A divided by the total volume of the solution multiplied by 100. See this. Volume of that component divided by the total volume into 100. Similarly, the volume percent of component B in the solution will be equal to volume of component B divided by the total volume into 100. Now, the third method of expressing the concentration is mass by volume in which in the numerator you can keep the mass of solute and in the denominator you can keep the volume. It is just similar to mass percent and volume percent like this and this you can write down mass of solute divided by the volume of solution into 100 to calculate the percentage. Now the fourth method of expressing the concentration is the parts per million. It is exactly similar to percentage by mass only the thing is here you have to multiply with 10 raised to the power 6 that means in 1 million you are calculating the number of particles of that substance whether it is component A or it is component B. Now the most important one comes and that is the mole fraction. Mole fraction is very important from this year uh, point of view. Mole fraction it is denoted by zeta. Now mole fraction is also calculated for solute separately and for solvent separately. The mole fraction of each component in the solution is equal to the number of moles of that substance divided by the total number of moles. You all can see mathematically uh, if suppose you are again having a two component system of component A and component B. It result in the formation of the solution A B. Now the mole fraction of component A in the solution it will be denoted as zeta A. Zeta A will be equal to number of moles of A divided by the total number of moles. Now number of moles you already uh, you are already knowing that number of moles is equal to given mass of that component divided by the molar mass. Similarly Zeta B will be equal to number of moles of B divided by the total number of moles. Now the next here it is written you all can see number of moles of A the mole fraction of component A zeta A is equal to number A, uh, number of moles of A divided by number of moles of A plus number of moles of B. Similarly zeta B will be equal to number of moles of B divided by the number of moles of A plus number of moles of B that is the total number of moles. Similarly, the next method of expressing the concentration which is very important is molarity. Molarity is always denoted by small m and it is equal to the mass moles of solute divided by the moles of solvent in kg. Moles of solute means number of moles of solute which is equal to given mass upon molar mass. 
Similarly, the next method of expressing the concentration is molarity. Molarity, it is denoted by capital M. Molarity is equal to the number of moles of solute divided by the volume of solution in liters. Now see, these two, they are calculated for the solution. We cannot calculate them separately for uh, component A and component B. That means for solute and solvent, they are not calculated. They are calculated for the solution only.